Hello, this is uh, tips for beginning tarot card readers. Um, maybe they already know like the meanings, but this is for people that haven't done readings for other people quite yet. So, sorry, I was moving my laptop. Um, yeah, so let's get started. It says, pick a deck that calls to you, just not for the uh, pretty artwork. I have, a, I have a list next to me of stuff I wrote down. Um, and so when you, you pick a deck, you kind of just, whatever one first, like, catches your eye, that's the one you want. Um, of course, if you're not the type of person where things like that happen to you, like, you just don't see, like, you're not that intuitive, um, I would pick the basic, like, the right away deck, personally. Um, I think it's pretty standard, and with this deck, if you learn the meanings of this deck, you can basically learn all the meanings of all the other decks, and it's, it's actually not as complicated as like what a lot of other professional tarot card readers will make it out to be. Um, and I also have another deck, and this was actually given to me by a gift by a friend's girlfriend. And her family, I guess they're kind of like voodoo type of witches or whatever. Um, and at one point in her life she was interested in it, and she bought herself a pack of tarot cards to learn it. Although she never actually, like, you know, officially, like, started to learn or whatever. So, she gave me these, and these have, like, upright meaning, and then the reverse reading. And I keep these in, like, they can't, like, they came in this little like, pouch. Um, uh, because it can be kind of hard to, um, like, continue to go online and pull out the meaning, the meaning, the meaning, and the learn the meanings. I will, my next video will be about numerology within the card. So let's say for instance this is like for this the the nine. I really stuck with numerology. Really well. The nine of swords. So you could you there one way to interpret this card would be the meaning of the, the like the meaning of the number nine. And then that's a uh, one way to do that. Um so yeah I would pick a book specifically to learn the meanings. Um quick tip on how to learn the meanings would be to Pick a card a day from a deck like this, not a, not a deck like this. Okay, I mean, you're already on it. Deck like this. Pick a card a day. Write down what you your intuition tells you what this card means, and then go in your book and actually write down the key words for the meaning of the card. And you know, there's only like 70 to 80 cards in a deck, so it will only take you a few months to do all that. But if you're not very patient. That may not work for you, so you could do like two or three cards a day if you wanted, but um, you know, forget to do that. Like it would, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't stand on top of it. I would. Um, and then my next tip for you would be, um, well, I'm gonna read exactly. No, I'm not. Um, to cleanse and charge your deck when you get it brand new. Um, to monthly cleanse and charge it, you can. Burn some sage. You can even use a normal incense stick. You can burn like resins, um, some charcoal. Um, you could then run your deck like this. Kind of want to open it up and run it through the smoke. Um, say a little blessing, and bam, your cards are cleansed. Um, you could leave these out in the full moonlight or the sunlight. Although I would use moonlight because you would think water is intuition. Intuition uh, refers back to the moon versus the sun. However, if you're like a um, somebody that works with a lot of masculine energies, that might work for you better. Uh, put these in a bowl of salt with a couple crystals and charge it and cleanse it overnight or in the moonlight. You can put this in the windowsill. There's a lot you can do with it. You can even get like a spray bottle with charged water, so like full moon water, lake water, river water, anything like that. Add some sea salt or some sort of salt, like Himalayan salt. And no sort of stuff like, um, and kind of just like lightly spray the card. You don't want to soak them because uh, sometimes they're a little bit more papery than they are plasticky. Mine's a little bit plasticky. Well, they felt more plasticky when they were first new and they weren't broken out yet. Um, you could like lightly spray that. You can add like an essential oil to it. Uh, you can afterwards um, use like an anointing oil, um, charged oil, anything like that, um, and just kind of anoint the deck. You might want to put like a, a pentacle on here. You might want to anoint the sides of the cards. I wouldn't go in and anoint these individually because they might stick. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Say a little blessing and chant for that. Um, 
My next tip is uh to keep your your deck in like um, you don't have to do this. A lot of people like to do this. I like to do this. Keep your decks in a special container. So, for instance, like, this deck stays in this bag and usually has pieces of quartz and amethyst in here. Or you could use, like, any stone that's for your third eye or, um, psychic abilities. Or just, like, clear quartz because that amplifies anything that it, it's just very... And then, um, yeah. I usually put those in here, and um, now you can keep the individual drawstring in its own little wooden box if you would like. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I just think as long as, and sometimes I set a crystal on top of here as well. Um, if like the crystals happen to come down here, like on the bottom or whatever, or I don't want to put one in here, I'll put one on top of here. Um, you don't have to keep these in a box as long as they're covered up. It tends to not absorb as much energy and negativity that may be um, when you're keeping your tarot cards. So if you're keeping your tarot cards like out in the open, your bedside table, or you know anything like that, um, or somewhere where there's a lot of traffic, a lot of humans that go through, you want to keep it like in a box with some crystals or all the negativity and other people's energy, so that cards don't absorb other people's energies. Um, and then this deck, I kind of just, I keep it in, I keep it in this box, and then I'll just set a piece of, like, tourmaline or clear quartz or something on top of here. Um, just to, because I'll just put them back in the box that they came in. Um, <clears throat> if I can figure out, like, my Amazon affiliate thing, because I am an Amazon affiliate, I will actually, because I got these on there, I will put that down below, um, the affiliate link where I got these, if you're interested. Um, yes, I do make a commission of a certain degree and you click on my link to purchase these but you don't have to do that. Um that's really up to you. Although I wrote a couple of reviews that between like, you know, um shipping and stuff like this box kinda gets destroyed. So to keep these in this box it may or may not work for you if the box is kinda like if. So you could keep these like in a Ziploc bag, um you could get like an old T shirt that's like white and just if you pick out like a piece that's like this big, like you cut it open and not this big, but like wow, okay. Like like this like wide and like this long, you kinda of like double it over and you sew up the sides and then you put your cards because you want to make sure you can fit your cards in it. And all you need is a piece of string and you just tie the top of it off. You can do it like that as well. Um, there's a lot of like DIY stuff like that you can do. Um so another tip would be um not to let other people touch your cards. Uh, I believe in this to a certain degree. I think that when they're not being used or whatever, um, not to let other people touch your cards. Uh, personally, because I think that your, your cards will absorb um, other people's negative energy and their emotion, what's going on for them. And you don't want that to influence your readings. You don't. You want your cards to be a clean slate with your energy. Um, like when you're actually doing a reading, okay? They will either shuffle the cards themselves. They'll have their client shuffle the cards, which I personally don't do. Um, sometimes I do though. I would say follow your intuition with that. If someone gives you negative vibes, I wouldn't have them shuffle your cards. For that reading. Um, but that's personally what I would do. Or you can shuffle the cards and both participants focus on it, um, on the question, and then just kind of like spread the cards out and then have them pick the cards for the spread. That is, to me, like, that's personally like what I do. Um, and like my next tip would be, because I kind of already said this, but both parties need to focus on the question, no matter who's shuffling it. What's going on? How it's being shuffled with both parties is very important. And and when you're when you know you're done shuffling is when it kind of feels right. Like use your intuition with that, and you will know when you're done shuffling. Um, and then my last cut the deck before you um actually have them pick out the cards. So what that means is after you're done shuffling, uh, you'll see this a lot in other people's tarot card reading videos. They'll divide the deck into three, maybe if you're a game, and then like they'll put one on top of each other and do it like that perhaps. Um, 
So my tip for that would be either to, well, it's to do that, and also, um, you can either cut the deck and have your client pick which one, what pile they want to do on the top, or you can do it, just use your intuition. Um, that is important here. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful to some beginners. Um, I will be coming out with a, a video soon about the numerology and how to memorize the meanings, and then there's another video with the court cards, the page, the knight, the king, the queen, and the ace, and then I will be coming out a video with the major arcana, so that it may be simpler for you guys to learn to read the tarot. Yeah, um, I really truly hope that was helpful. Um, like this video if it helped you. Um, and if it was helpful and there was some tips you've probably never heard before. Um, and subscribe to this channel for more to stay updated because this will be a series that will go on and I will upload a new video for the series every Friday. Um, thank you for watching.